Hello, good morning my dear students. Today I will deal with principles of electricity that is classification of elements into conductors, insulators and semiconductors. Then we will discuss about resistance and this their effect with temperature and finally, we will discuss Ohm's law. Then resistance in series and resistance in parallel. Now, uh, let us take up the fundamental that is the definition of electric current. What is electric current? Electric current is defined as the continuous flow of electrons. <coughs> let us see uh, the uh, circuit given here for the understanding purpose of electric current. But as we all know from our previous knowledge, the flow of electrons is supported by some material which are called conductors and opposed by some other material which are called insulators. To understand this difference behavior of material, we have to look at the atomic structure of elements. All the matter whether it is a solid, liquid or gas consists of minute particles called molecules. The molecules are again made up of atoms. The atom consists of protons, neutrons and electrons. The protons and neutrons are situated in the nucleus and the electrons will be revolving around the nucleus. The structure of an atom is more or less similar to our solar system. The nucleus is the central core and it consists of neutrons and protons. The electrons will revolve round the nucleus. The electrons are arranged in orbits. You know from our 10th class knowledge, the orbits are uh, S type, P type, uh, D type orbitals are there. Now look at the atomic structure of hydrogen. Hydrogen is having one electron. This is the nucleus and this is the uh, first orbit. One electron is there for hydrogen. This is the atomic structure of helium. Helium, this is the nucleus. In the nucleus, we will have two protons and in the orbit, we are having two electrons. These are the two electrons. Now, let us see the atomic structure of lithium. Lithium's nucleus is this one. In the nucleus, we will have three protons and three electrons are arranged in two orbits. In the first orbit, we have two electrons, first one and then the second one and the third electron will be present in the next orbit that is P type orbit. The maximum number of electrons in one orbit or a shell is fixed. The law governing the electron allocation in an orbit is, we all know, it is 2 n square, where n is the orbit number. So, if you apply this formula, the first orbit can accommodate 2 electrons, 2 into 1 square that is 2 electrons. For the second orbit, if we apply this formula, we get 8 electrons. Similarly, third orbit can accommodate 18 electrons, etcetera. A force of attraction binds the electrons in an atom to the nucleus. This force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between nucleus and the orbit in which the electron is rotating. Therefore, the force of attraction between valence electrons and nucleus will be low. Such valence electrons can be easily removed from their parent atom by applying external energy. The maximum number of electrons that can be accommodated in the outermost orbit is 8 only. For the outermost orbit, the 2 n square formula is not applicable. Whatever may be the number of that orbit, we can accommodate only 8 electrons. This outermost orbit is called valence orbit. The electrons in that orbit 
are called valence electrons. When the valence electrons are 1, 2 or 3, they can be easily detached from their parent nuclei. Such material are defined as conducting material or conductors. What happens if the valence electrons are more than 3? They may be 4, 5 or 6 or even 7. When the valence electrons are exactly 4, such material behave sometimes as conductor and sometimes as insulator. That depends upon the temperature at it is working. So, they are classified as semiconductors. When the valence electrons are 5, 7, 5, 6, 7 or 8, they cannot be removed easily and such material are classified as insulating materials. That means, they will not allow the passage of electrons freely through them. So, they are called insulating material or insulators. So, after defining the conductors, insulators and semiconductors, now let us see the idea of electric potential and current. All the atoms will be as we all know normally in neutral state that is number of protons are exactly equal to number of electrons. So, an atom will not have any electric charge on it. As we know protons are having positive charge and electrons are having negative charge and as the number of protons is equal to number of electrons, the charge will be cancelled out and it will be in neutral state. But due to external force, the atom may gain or lose some electrons to or from their outer orbit. That means, by applying some external force, we may lose, uh, uh, the atom may gain or uh, that means take or lose, it may give some electrons to other orbits. In such state, the number of electrons are not equal to number of protons and the atom acquire a negative charge or a positive charge. Such atoms are called ions. The atoms are said to be excited in that state. The excited atoms will always try to neutralize their charges either by losing the extra electrons or by gaining the deficit electrons. Thus, the excited atoms will create an electrical force to move electrons from one place to other in a conducting material. This electric pressure is called electric potential. I hope it is clear. Let us see again the def uh, <coughs> definition. The difference in electrical potential between two points in an electric circuit is called electric potential difference or the voltage. The voltage is measured in volts. As long as there is electric potential difference between two points, the electrons will move continuously through the electric circuit. As we have seen from the starting, this movement is nothing but electric current. And the current is measured in amperes. Now, let us see Ohm's law. Ohm's law states that the temperature remaining constant, the ratio of potential difference applied across the circuit to the current flowing through it is a constant. So, potential difference divided by current is equal to constant V by I is equal to R provided, provided the temperature is kept constant. This constant is called resistance of the circuit. It is denoted by R and the units for resistance is ohms. Ohm's law can be put in different forms. V by I is equal to R or V is equal to I into R. Similarly, 
i is equal to v by r these are the different forms of ohms law now let us see the definition of resistance resistance can be defined in two ways resistance is defined as the property of a material by which it opposes the flow of elect electric current through it or you can define resistance as 1 ohm if <coughs> it causes a flow of 1 ampere current through the circuit when a voltage of 1 volt is applied across that circuit. After the definition of resistance, let us see how resistance of a conductor changes with the physical dimensions. These are known as loss of resistance. Resistance depends upon length of the conductor denoted by small l, cross sectional area of conductor small a, the nature of the material that is which type of material is used for the conductor and then working temperature of the conductor. All these four factors will influence the resistance of a material. If we have same length, but <coughs> it is made up of two material that will have different resistances because the third cause nature of material. Similarly, if we take same material and different lengths, the lengthier one have more resistance and the smaller length will have less resistance that is due to the first cause the length of the conductor L. Resistance is directly proportional to the length of the material. So, R is proportional to L. Similarly, resistance inversely varies with its area. R is proportional to 1 by A. Combining the above two, we get R proportional to L by A. Now, if we put a constant R is equal to rho L by A, where rho is the constant, it is known as specific resistance or resistivity. Now, let us see the definition of specific resistance. Here, if we put <coughs> L is equal to 1 meter and A is equal to 1 square meter, then R is equal to rho. Therefore, specific resistance is defined as the resistance between the opposite faces of a meter cube, opposite faces are these two the opposite faces of a meter cube made up of that material. The specific resistance is measured in ohm meter. Now, let us see the definition of conductance. Conductance is the reciprocal of resistance. So, it measures the easiness with which a material will allow the flow of current through it. It is denoted by the letter G and the units for conductance are Siemens. So, from the definition G is equal to 1 by R reciprocal of the resistance that implies G is equal to A by rho L or sigma A by L. Sigma is called specific conductance then. <coughs> now, after getting the knowledge of resistance and how it varies with its physical dimensions of the material. Now, let us see the effect of temperature on resistance. As I have mentioned while explaining the Ohm's law, the resistance of a material will change with a change in temperature. As long as <coughs> temperature is constant, resistance will be constant but as temperature changes resistance also changes. If resistance increases by increasing the temperature, the material is said to have 
a positive temperature coefficient tcr if the resistance decreases by increasing temperature the material is said to have a negative temperature coefficient negative tcr all the metals are having positive temperature coefficient that is if we increase the temperature the resistance of the metal also increases now let us see on which factors the rise in resistance depends the rise in resistance is denoted by delta r delta r is equal to rt minus r0 where rt is the resistance of the material at t degree centigrade and r0 is the resistance of the same material at 0 degree centigrade it is found that the difference between these two that is delta r directly proportional to its initial resistance that is r not and directly depends upon the rise of rise in the temperature the rise in temperature is from we have reached t degree centigrade from 0 degree centigrade therefore t minus 0 that is equal to t and this difference also depends upon the nature of the material so combining these three rt minus r not is proportional to r not into t that implies rt minus r not is equal to alpha r not t where alpha is a constant and it is known as temperature coefficient of resistance tcr so rewriting this above formula rt minus r0 is equal to alpha r not t as alpha is equal to rt minus r not by r not into t and putting rt minus r not as delta r the formula becomes delta r by r not t hence temperature coefficient of of a material may be defined as the increase in resistance per ohm original resistance per degree centigrade rise in temperature the units for alpha r per degree centigrade so we can calculate the value of rt that is resistance of that material at t degree centigrade if we look at the graph showing the resistance of copper at 0 degree centigrade it is having r not this oa represents r not resistance resistance at 0 degree centigrade now if we go on increasing the temperature temperature is shown on x axis and if we go on increasing the temperature resistance also increasing so resistance at 0 degree centigrade is ab the length of the uh, this y axis is ab at 0 degree centigrade and it is now increased to cd similarly if we decrease the temperature the resistance of the copper decreases because copper is a metal and all the metals are having a positive temperature coefficient if we increase temperature resistance also increases if we decrease the temperature resistance decreases so if we go on decreasing the temperature resistance also falls down actually if we go on decreasing the temperature resistance should be decreasing and finally it should come to zero and it will be happening at minus 234.5 degree centigrade this is for theoretical purpose only practically it is not coming to zero but at some temperature it will be saturating and the curve will go like this so it has uh, in this diagram we are having two similar triangles they are o a b this is one triangle o a b o a b and another one is o c d two similar triangles are there 
from the two similar triangles we have C D by A B is equal to O D by O B. What is C D? C D is <coughs> the final resistance at T degree centigrade that is R T and what is A B? A B is the initial resistance that is R naught. So, R T by R naught is equal to T plus 234.5 divided by 234.5. So, rewriting this equation R T is equal to R naught into 1 plus T by 234.5. So, comparing this to the standard equation R T is equal to R naught into 1 plus alpha T alpha is equal to 1 by 234.5 for copper. So, every resistor will have two terminals starting terminal S and a finishing terminal named as F. If F 1 of first resistor is connected to S 2 that is the starting terminal of second resistor. So, that there is only one path for current flow the connection is called a series circuit. Now, let us consider two resistors R 1 and R 2 which are connected in series. This combination is connected across a battery of V volts. Now, by applying Ohm's law voltage across various resistors we can calculate as V 1 that is voltage across the first resistor that is equal to I into R 1. The voltage across the second resistor V 2 that is equal to I into R 2. Now, the voltage drops across different resistors if we sum up all these thing all these drops that should be equal to the applied voltage. Therefore, V is equal to V 1 plus V 2 that is equal to I R 1 plus I R 2. If we take I as common factor I into R 1 plus R 2 V by I is equal to R 1 plus R 2 R in the place of V by I if we put R R as the equivalent resistance when two resistors are combined and acting as a single resistor then V by I is equal to R R equivalent resistance that R is equal to R 1 plus R 2. So, when two resistors are connected in series two or more resistors the equivalent resistance will be equal to the sum of all the resistors. Now, let us see the salient points of a series circuit that is important points of a series circuit same current flows through all the points and different resistors have their own drops as we have seen in the previous one V 1 is equal to I into R 1. So, the drop across the first resistor will depend upon the resistance of the first element. Similarly, the drop across second resistor will depend upon the value of second resistor. So, different resistors have their own drops. The voltage drops are additive and their sum is equal to the applied voltage that is V is equal to V 1 plus V 2 and resistors are additive as we have seen from the derived equation R is equal to R 1 plus R 2. So, resistances are additive and the powers are also additive the power consumed in first resistor and the power consumed in second resistor if we add these two that will give the total power consumed in a series circuit. Now, let us see uh, parallel circuit when all the starting ends of resistances are connected to one common point and all the finishing ends are connected to another common point they are said to be connected in parallel. In this type of connection there are as many paths for current as the number of resistors or branches. Now, let us consider two resistors R 1 and R 2 are connected in parallel and this combination is put across a battery of V volts. So, as I mentioned earlier this will give rise to two currents because two resistors are connected in parallel. So, two currents will be 
coming let i1 is the current in branch r1 and let i2 is the current in branch r2 now the voltage across each branch is the same because they are connected in parallel and when two or more resistors are connected in parallel same voltage will appear across them and this voltage is equal to the applied voltage v in the current in individual branches can be calculated by applying ohms law the current in first branch is i1 i1 is equal to the voltage acting at that branch is v so i1 is equal to v by r1 where r1 is the resistance of first resistor similarly i2 is equal to v by r2 now if we sum up i1 and i2 that will give rise to i amperes which is to be supplied from the battery this total current should be supplied by the battery so i is equal to i1 plus i2 and in place of i1 and i2 if i write v by r1 plus v by r2 and that is equal to v into 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 that is equal to i by v is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 and in place of i by v i am writing 1 by r r where r is the equivalent resistance when two resistors are put parallel so 1 by r is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 now let us see the important points or features of a parallel circuit same voltage acts across all the parts that is all the branches will have same voltage different branches will have their own currents if a resistor is having less resistance more current will be allowing it similarly if a high resistance is there small current will be allowed through it so different branches will have their own currents the branch currents are additive and their sum is equal to the total current supplied by the battery the conductances are additive what is conductance conductance is the reciprocal of resistance so 1 by r is equal to 1 by r1 plus 1 by r2 r if we do the mathematical exercise we can write r as r1 r2 by r1 plus r2 here also powers are additive same as in the case of a series circuit dear students in this session we have seen the fundamentals of electricity we have discussed atomic structure what is meant by potential difference current then i have dealt with ohms law how resistance varies with temperature and what is the equivalent resistance when resistances are connected in series or in parallel i thank very much all of you further clarification contact the additional secretary state board of technical education and training 7th floor brkr bhavan tank band road hyderabad 500063 fax 0403220000 Six.